Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Watkins-Porter. You must be prepared to ignite. Coming up on this episode of The Entrepreneurial You. I look at lots of sites. There are a couple of areas where nearly always they are weak. If you suffer from either of these two problems and you fix them, you will see favorable traction from Google. The first thing is website speed, how fast your website loads. This, if you've done anything in, in, in internet or SEO, is probably something you've heard before. And I can't stress to you how important it is that you take it seriously. Site speed is a ranking factor for Google and for humans. For humans, if your website is slow, it leads to lower conversion rates, lower average order values, and lower revenue per visitor. If your website's fast, higher conversion rates, higher average order values, and higher values per visitor, like revenue generated per visitor. That's a human ranking factor. Google only loves you when everyone else loves you first. Wendy Purcell. Hey, my peak performer, I trust that you are continuing to remain safe and stay safe with you and your family. And I want to welcome you to episode 208 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Henneke Watkins Porter. Every week, I have been bringing you amazing guests dealing with leadership and entrepreneurship so that you can level up your game. Today's episode is with Matthew Woodard. And Matthew started building websites before Google or YouTube existed. Can you imagine that, right? (laughs) Back then, he was just a kid delivering newspapers before school to pay for the server. And of course, he had no idea that you could use the internet to make money. Wow, look at that. He just loved playing video games and writing, which led him to build his first website for people to share their highlight videos. So I'm excited to have this conversation because it kind of sounds like we're going back to the the, the era of dinosaurs uh, way back then. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I'm like I'm like 36, but I'll be... <laughs> I know, right? Well, I I think I could write HTML code before I could write English. <laughs> wow, wow. So so absolutely, our conversation is going to be using SEO to drive traffic and have massive growth. Welcome, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you for the welcome. Yeah, I, yeah, I've been doing things for a little long time. I, you know, for anyone listening today, I, I recommend you get a pen and paper, uh, especially if you if you have any kind of website and, and are looking to increase your organic search traffic. There's a couple of things I'm going to mention today that you can implement immediately at nearly no cost and no effort that will help you grow uh, a, a little bit. And and before you do that, Matt, I want to ask you a question about Jamaica. So I know you're from the UK, but you're now living in Costa Rica. So you are pretty much your neighbor, but um, um, like distant neighbor more so. But yeah. <laughs> have you ever been to Jamaica? No, I haven't. I actually haven't been to Jamaica. Um, did you say that like with a straight face? Because that should not have happened if you did. No, 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 no. I, I actually <laughs> haven't been. Um, I, I found my way here to Costa Rica and I've become ignorant of the world after that because it's just so nice here. Mm. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to hold you to the fact that guess what? If you do, if you do visit Jamaica, then you may want to change your perspective, but you can hang on to it for now. I won't, you know, I, I won't put that, use it against you. You can hang on well, to that. I, my, 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 my main problem with Jamaica is I'm ginger and pale. I'm genetically allergic to sun <laughs> what? no you're not you just need a little more of it yeah you perhaps need a little okay. more of it <laughs> Uh, my, 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 my friends always joke that I, cu- I couldn't afford enough sun cream to go somewhere like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can't afford anything, Matt. All right, so before, <laughs> before, <laughs> before we go into serious matters, right? So, well, a little more serious matters. So here's, here's what I want to say to you. I want to first off congratulate you on the amazing work that you're doing, right? Number one. Number two, I want to share a little story with you because about two, three years ago, a friend of mine started out as a mentor, but became a friend of mine who he kept sharing content with me from different persons, you know, things that he think that would help me on my journey. And I remember vividly, one of the things he shared with me was your blog, Matthew, Matthew Woodard's blog. 
many years ago, well, a couple of years ago, when he shared that blog with me, I, you know, I was so in love with the content that you were putting out and, you know, blogging. I was really, really taken aback and really loved it and digged into it really deeply. So after a little while, I decided that I'm going to be looking for you on Instagram, right? So I, I needed a little more. So I was looking for you on Instagram. I found Matthew Woodard on Instagram, reach out to Matthew Woodard, only to find it's a totally different Matthew Woodard. Right? <laughs> when I found it though, when I found him though, I realized he was building websites and doing all these amazing things. So I actually did, you know, those um, lead captures where, you know, sign up for this and you get that. So I signed up for his website and um, analytics, right? Yeah. I did that um, to, to, to kind of evaluate my website and stuff, got back the response and so on. Before you know it, he was the one who created my current website. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. And uh, yeah, generally I'm hard to find on social media. Yeah, mm. I, I like algorithms and dogs. So <laughs> <laughs> Are you pretty funny too? Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> so you have um, skill set building websites, writing, video production, team management, building communities. Yeah, Where did oh, yeah. it all start for you? Because, I mean, earlier when I talked in the intro, you, you sounded like the intro sounded like, you know, you're several decades old, but you're not. You only a few. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess. So where has it all started? Look, I was that kid that was always trying to sell you something you didn't want. Mm. You know, what I mean, like when we were growing up, I'd be the one that was knocking on your door and asking to wash your car and you'd say no. And I'd knock every week for two months and eventually you'd say yes. And uh, and then I'd wash your car every week. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'd be that kid. I was always doing something. I guess people call it the entrepreneurial spirit, but you know, I was just having fun and and you know, buy 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 a bag of candy in the morning and uh, from the store and then sell it at school at a ridiculous markup. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, no shame there, no that. shame there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the original Pokemon cards made a killing with them. If I'd have held on to them, I would be considerably more well off than I am now because I had multiple complete original sets. Just the Charizard cards were fifty thousand dollars. Had a few of those, you know. But I was always dealing card, like, like Pokemon cards, or or just selling stuff. And then I ended up getting jobs, which I did like warehouse work and supermarket work, which sucks. And I remember being very young, looking around me like, "Whoa, this dude's fifty. He's been here for twenty years." I I I've been here for four days. I, I, this this isn't this isn't it, you know. <laughs> like <laughs> this isn't it. I'm looking around at the the people around me, thinking, no, this isn't it. I ended up in the, in the corporate world. I had some great success there. Uh, oh, sorry, all the way through my school life as well. I was naturally interested in internet and building websites. It's just what I like doing. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have really any like guides or tutorials on how to do things like now you know if you want to build a website now it takes minutes right get a domain install wordpress put a theme done well we didn't have that um it was months <laughs> not minutes so i was always interested in the web video gaming competitive the the, the dawn of esports medal of honor and call of duty one on the pc which wow we're going back like 20 years and what I found in, in, in the dawn of esports is lots of people were recording videos of themselves, like their, their highlight videos, their best shots, you know, their best moments, and then releasing them. But the problem was we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have anywhere to watch videos. We didn't have anything like that. So I think I was like 11 at the time. But can I tell you something, Matt? Um, stick a pin. Hold your thoughts. It's yeah. like my poor mind cannot even go back to <laughs> when there was a time without YouTube. <laughs> like, I'm trying to remember. When was yeah, there ever right. a time without YouTube? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and um, people had all these videos and, and they wanted to share them. So I built a website that allows them to share them. And we built a small community. I was at like 11. I was paying for the server with a paper round at the time. And, you know, I unfortunately... At, at the age of 11, I lacked the vision to build YouTube, which is what I should have done, right? <laughs> <laughs> the problem was we wanted to share our videos. We had nowhere to share them, and there was no, like, community. There wasn't, like, social networks. There wasn't Facebook. There wasn't, there wasn't even MySpace, you know? 
Um, I never knew you could make money with the internet, just playing video games, you know, and 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 and, and other things that teenage boys do on the internet. <laughs> and, uh, and and that's it. That led into a corporate world where all of those skills I've kind of picked up from from you know hustling at school or knocking on doors, washing cars, or everything I, I'd learned on the internet and how that works. When I was in the corporate world, I was in a, a very very beneficial position because it was about the start of the time when people would trust putting their credit card information into a website. You might remember there was a time where if you put your credit card information in a website, you were going to lose your house. You know, like there was that kind of fear around it. <laughs> like everybody um, was a scammer or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was that kind of fear. So I was lucky to step into the corporate world with quite a, a depth of, of, of web knowledge that most people didn't have on top of my kind of entrepreneurial experience as a kid right at the time when the internet was becoming an accepted sales medium. So being in that environment, I learned a lot. Um, I, it was very frustrating. I, I eventually left that world uh, where HR put it very nicely. They said, uh, you, you're too passionate about what you do to work in a corporate environment. What that actually meant was that if people were doing a shit job, I'd tell them. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I was passionate about what I wanted to do. And I was like, you know, we've got to do it. We've got to do it right. This, look at all the money. Despite us making lots of sales and lots of other things, there was always internal politics and people just didn't care you know jobs bodies are showing up doing a minimum and going home you know mm -hmm. and, so um, which pretty much means that you had the entrepreneurial dna um uh, you know really carved out into you i guess so and uh it was very difficult because obviously as a young person in a corporate environment no one's taking you seriously anyway despite the fact that you're generating ridiculous amount of sales with no budget and and there was a lot i didn't know and i didn't understand and and, and things in that environment as well i, I was still young and and as HR said it, I was too passionate to be in a corporate environment, which basically meant no one gives a f so just f off, you know, <laughs> like, just, uh... <laughs> so that's what I did. Then I built my first site. I actually built something that I'd been trying to build while I was there and they told me that I couldn't build it. It just grew and grew and grew from there. That was about 10 or 12 years ago now. I took the full time leap. So no, oh, I mean, based on what I've read in the intro, what I've said in the intro and what you have said, you, persons by now listening in know that if there is anybody to talk about going your website, going a blog, using SEO, it's you, Yeah. right? Because you've been there, done that, perhaps yeah. wrote the book about it through your blog. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the course and, and everything else. And what's more important than any of that is, is the results delivered. Right. And if you go on my blog and hit the testimonials page, I guarantee you get bored of reading testimonials before you hit the end of that page. <laughs> and we're not talking testimonials like, oh, my God, that content's really good. Thank you. We're talking like, oh, I applied this tutorial and I went to make $100,000 that month. Thank you. Proper testimonials. We do a video series called Unboxed SEO. And in that, we take a website, we highlight all of the problems, and we hand it over to the owner who then fixes all of the problems, and then we publish the results. So last week, we were able to publish a results video where we tripled the rev revenue of an e-commerce site in 90 days. And all he did was make simple changes. All right. Following so the... I am so, so anxious. Like I'm sitting <laughs> on my chair in my office, basically, right, because I'm curious to know how. Is it is the how, right? Um, yeah experience you you have the experience and you're going to teach us today matt how to do it so let's perhaps use a practical example the website hennikawatkisporter.com so along the way we can take persons on a journey and i want to increase my traffic i want to which is although hypothetical is very real as well i want to increase my traffic i want to have more sales what do I need to be doing? Take me through that process. Okay, look, I look at lots of sites and there are a couple of areas where nearly always they are weak. And if you fix these two things, if you suffer from either of these two problems and you fix them, you will see 
favorable traction from Google. The first thing is website speed, how fast your website loads. This, if you've done anything in, in, in internet or SEO, is probably something you've heard before. And I can't stress to you how important it is that you take it seriously. Site speed is a ranking factor for Google and for humans. For humans, if your website is slow, it leads to lower conversion rates, lower average order values, and lower revenue per visitor. If your website's fast, higher conversion rates, higher average order values, and higher values per visitor, like revenue generated per visitor. That's a human ranking factor. Imagine if you're going into a store and you just want to buy something quickly and there's a line of 10 people, you're probably just going to walk out. Same thing with website speed, exactly the same thing. I always like to think of a website, like if this wasn't a website and it was a physical store, how would it translate? How would the experience translate? And a slow website for me is like having a, a long line at the checkout, right? People are on your website, they want to buy because they're on your website, but you're making it difficult because there's a long line, right? So that, that's, that's the human ranking factor of site speed. The other benefit that you need to understand, though, is that it's a ranking factor for Google. For about three years, Google have made site speed a ranking factor. Now, it's not often Google confirm what are the different elements that go into their decisions to rank websites, but they have confirmed that site speed is one of them. On top of that, they're going to double down on that in May with the release of the core web vitals update. You don't really need to understand too much about it other than it, that if your website's slow, you are going to suffer. If your website's fast, you're going to benefit. Website speed is an issue that I'd say 90%, 95% of the websites I review have. So if you're listening to my voice right now, you probably have an issue. The way to find out if you have the problem or not is you need to go to a website called batchspeed.com, www.batchspeed.com, batch speed. You put your homepage into that. It's going to scan your website and then it's going to use Google to tell you a score of, of how you score on page speed. If your scores are under 60, you've got a huge problem and you are losing money every single day. You do not fix it. And the majority of the people listening to this will have scores under 60. The vast majority. Now, in the perfect world, what you actually want is scores of 100 on mobile. You'll see it splits the results between mobile and desktop. You want mobile results 60 and above as a minimum. So first off, identify, do I have the problem? Go on batchspeed.com, run the scan and see if you've got the problem. If you have got the problem, there are a number of fixes that you can use. The easiest one, if you're not technically minded at all, you've got no experience, you, you, you don't know how to build a website, you, you just know you've got the problem and you want to fix it, perfect, we can fix it together. All you need to do is go on nitropack.com, N-I-T-R-O-P-A-C-K.com, nitropack.com, sign up for their service and integrate, follow their instructions. The vast majority of the time that will immediately fix all of your page speed issues. And it takes about five minutes to do. However, if you integrate NitroPack, it's very important that you test afterwards. So if you're an e-commerce site, place a test order. If you're an affiliate site, make sure your affiliate link's working. If you've got email sign-up forms on your site, make sure they're working, right? After installing NitroPack. But the vast majority of the time, you're going to plug that in. It's going to take care of your site speed issues immediately. You're immediately going to see an increase in conversion rate. You're immediately going to see an increase in average order value. You're immediately going to see an increase in revenue earned per visitor. And about six weeks later, you're going to start seeing the benefits from Google. What you want to look for is if, if anyone's listening has Google Search Console set up for their website, which is completely free. If you don't have it set up, go and get it set up right now. And in Google Search Console, there is a report called Core Web Vitals. You want all of your all of 
that report to say good. It's either going to say bad needs improvement or good. You want them all to be good and Nitro Pack will get you there. If you hit that result, you will see an increase in search traffic in around six weeks. So that is in a nutshell site speed you know a, a ranking factor for humans in how they behave and, and, and transact on your website and a ranking factor for google it's a problem nearly everybody has and it's a problem that nearly anyone can fix in ten, five or ten minutes so that, that, that's that's the first you know big thing that you should be paying attention to mm -hmm. i am certainly going to be doing that because my website needs some serious help as I just tested here a while ago, and for mm -hmm. transparency, and we're using it because we want um, persons to know that we're doing this. We're using an hypothetical example, but are very real in in in, in um, as well. So, using hennikawatkisporter.com, a very very low score on bat speed of thirty. So, there's work to do there. Having those low scores, it's it's like you're creating an uphill battle for yourself. It's like you've got to walk up a hill with a big weight around your neck you know running a business is hard enough as it is site speed is just one of those big weights that's around your neck that you don't even know is a weight around your neck and it is so easy to fix let me put it like this my seo agency we have a four month minimum contract most seo agencies have a 12 month minimum contract and i swear that's their business model they just lock you in and then take the money right but we have a four month minimum so that means that if we're not performing you can sack us at any time and that's terrifying as an seo agency <laughs> because normally what happens is we give you good results and then you don't need us anymore so we get sacked what that means is we've got four months to prove ourselves and first task we do for any new site is site speed because it nearly always gives us positive results within six weeks which means once that four month contract's up you're not going to sack us and you're going to continue to to use us right so that's how powerful site speed is like it's the number one thing that we do to make sure we retain clients that's how much of an impact it gives. So back up a little. Um, you talked about Nitro Pack. I'm actually trying to put it in now. Is it N I T R O P A C K? Yeah. N I T R O P A C K dot I O. Oh, that I O. Okay, I use dot com. That's what was happening. Okay, because I'm checking as we go along. So I'm actually doing, you know, for my audience members as well. This okay, so, a... for the, so so on Nitro Pack, you can put your that URL that was posting a 30 score that into the home page of nitro pack and it will do a, a, an optimization and tell you what your your score would be if you migrated to the service the second thing is that google now in the last two or three years are looking to send traffic to people that are accountable they want to send their traffic to real businesses and real people now, what you tend to find a lot in the SEO community and anyone working as an affiliate is that they're often hiding uh, who they are or they've got an about page, but it, there's not really a photo of them or anything like that. What's absolutely critical, whether you're an affiliate, an e-commerce site, a service business or whatever it is, is absolutely critical that you publish your business information in the footer on the content contact page and on the about page that means your registered business address and your phone number also on your about page you should have a photo of you the business owner your employees your workshop your brick and mortar premises your office even if it's like a virtual office just people you know selfies at the desk or something you should be communicating to google that i am in fact a real person or business that is accountable for my website that is missing off many of the sites i look at even real businesses where you would expect like okay well where's your address man like you've got the address on your google my business listing but where's the address on your website it's more important than ever before google knows you are an accountable business or person not everyone has the ability to publish an address or phone number on their site Maybe they're running a business from home or, you know, maybe they live in a high risk area and they're not comfortable with sharing that kind of information and, and such things. I get it. But from Google's point of view, you are an anonymous spammer. I, I literally just had a, had, a, had a call before this where the guy's search traffic was degrading rapidly over time, but his content was excellent. Some of the best content I've ever read. 
the reason for that was he was acting as an anonymous Amazon affiliate spammer, even though he wasn't. To fix that, he has to put his business registration information, the address of phone number in the footer on the about page and the contact page. But if you can't do that, you've got to get creative with your solutions. So you can use a virtual office service. If you're trying to rank your website in the United States, you need an address in the United States. You can do a Google search. There's, there's a million different services you can choose from and have a virtual office service that allows you to get an address. That's the first bit solved. The second part is the phone number. Now, most businesses would have a phone number, but if you don't, uh, if you're an affiliate or something like that and you don't have a phone number, what you can use is a service called CallRail, C-A-L-L-R-A-I-L. And CallRail allows you to create phone numbers in anywhere in the world, in any geo, in any town, immediately. And then what we do is we record a, a voice message like, hi, you've reached this website. We're unavailable to take your call right now. Please leave a message after the tone, something like that. So anyone that calls gets straight to the answer phone message. And then what CallRail does is it takes the answer phone message and emails it to you. So you never have to answer a phone. And you never have to expose a real phone number and you never have to talk to anyone. You just get an email with the answer phone messages as they come. But the point of the phone number is not to have people to call you. The point of the phone number is just to show Google, look, we're real. We exist. Those signals are very, very important to have on your website now if you don't have them. All of this started about three years ago with the Medic update. If you hear people talk about Google algorithm updates and they refer to the Medic update, in my opinion, it was named wrongly. It mostly hit the medical industry the most, but they weren't targeting the medical industry, in my opinion. They wanted websites to be accountable. They wanted to know that the, the, if they were sending traffic to you, that you were a real entity that could be trusted. And the easiest way to do that is to publish registered business information and phone number. Matt, you have given so much. Believe me, I said to you earlier <laughs> in our pre-chat that we're going to be talking for about 24 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. um, we're over that. No, um, we're over 24 minutes. And you've made <laughs> those two. You've, you've left two salient points with us about how to grow websites. And personally, that is a lot of information that you have shared. And I'm going yep. to be using personally for my own site. So I know that not only is my community getting value, I'm taking notes as, as you're talking. <laughs> like I'm in school, right? You did say to take a pen. Well, I have my notepad on my phone <laughs> and I'm taking notes. So I want to thank you for sharing. But before I, I skedaddle and you run, run and go about your business, I'm going to ask you, Matt, just wrap up the conversation in terms of improving S using SEO to drive traffic so that we can have growth. And then once you've done that, you can share your contact details. And if you have a giveaway that you want to, to send to our community. What we've discussed today is, is a weekend project. Fixing your site speed, you can do in the morning. Fixing your business information, you can do in the afternoon. Doing those things will benefit you greatly. If you want to continue that journey and if you want to keep building on that, what can you do? Well, if you hit my website, matthewwoodward.co.uk, on the home page, you will see a quick win SEO process. It's a four-step process that will allow you to grow your search traffic. It costs absolutely nothing to sign up for, and it costs absolutely nothing to integrate apart from about 10 hours of your time. That process will increase your search traffic. That's what I've got to give away, right? Like results. So please, as a weekend project, fix your site speed, fix your business listings, and then sign up for the quick win SEO process and follow that and you will see success. And you'll be very, very, very happy that you did. That's all I've got to share. Really. Uh, and you, you've shared a lot. Thank you so much, <laughs> Matthew Woodard. Such a pleasure it has been speaking with you. And like I mentioned in the intro, um, I've been following you for a while. So when your assistant reached out to me, I was like, wow, small world. I mean, the answer had to be yes, right? <laughs> small world. <laughs> what, what, what if I told you it wasn't my assistant that reached out to you and it was an automated script? Oh, it, it was. <laughs> oh, okay. From well, it did say Heather. So <laughs> when you, you setting reply, that up? 
Say again? When you replied, you spoke to a human, but uh, mm-hmm. I will put the link for anyone that's interested in that. Mm-hmm. I will put the link in the chat for you right now, and maybe you can share that with the readers, but I will show you how I automate podcast bookings, uh, just like this one. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. I am going to check it out. You have left so much with me. I don't want to go, but I have to go. <laughs> we have to go. Thanks again, Matthew. You've You've left a lot of value, a ton of value with us, and I'm grateful. No problem at all. Look, anyone anyone listening, you got any questions, find me, hit me up. I'm here to help. Awesome sauce. And thank you for tuning into this episode with Matthew Woodard. I look forward to connecting with you next, uh, next week. I know that you've gained a ton of value. I don't have to ask because, you know, I'm just, just soaking up all in myself. But in the meantime, until I bring you another amazing guest next week, as a matter of fact, let me just tell you what's going to happen next week. Next week, I'm doing an episode swap with someone who has been on this show, April Spint, and um, she's coming on her show talking about, well, it's actually Aaron uh, Adon, who is coming on the show to talk about Harvard business success and all of that. So that's going to be an episode swap. I'm giving her my episode with Seth Godin so that we're both um, swapping and, and partnering to help each other grow. But in the meantime, if you want to get coaching on podcasting, one-on-one coaching to start your podcast, or if you want to be a, a part of my mastermind, reach out to me on hennikawatkisporter.com. Send me a WhatsApp message that comes directly to my phone, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Here is my point of hope for this week. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. First Peter 1 verse 3. What good? We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Tees, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange.